What's up guys, welcome back to another video. This is John from Lost Relic Games. And today we'll be following up from the last tutorial, which was shooting bullets. And in this one, we're going to be um, making the enemy flash on impact and then finishing off with a tremendous particle explosion. Please do give this video a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel. I've got heaps of game dev content coming up. Okay, so this is a scene we created in the last tutorial. We've got a uh, Mega Man and when we click, we can shoot. And he's got like a looping uh, blink animation. And here we've got um, two scripts. We've got um, a play controller where when we press the shoot button, we instantiate a bullet and a bullet script which um, gives the bullet velocity and also destroys the bullet after a fraction of a second. So in this uh, video, I want to follow on from that and bring an enemy into the scene that we can shoot and hopefully destroy in a spectacular burst of particles. So let's do that now. I've created a simple um, enemy here, which just has a box collider and rigid body attached that um, when we shoot, probably won't do too much. Wow. Oh, crazy. Let's do that again. Land on your feet, land on your feet. Yes! That was awesome. Okay, but it's a bug. <laughs> so first thing I want I want to quickly do is go to my bullet. And this should be, yeah. Sorry, the box collider on the bullet should be a trigger. So let's go back and run that again. Yeah, that's better. Okay, so the bullets are passing through the enemy. So the first step of this tutorial process is to create an enemy script, which we will assign to this big, ugly looking guy. Uh, so get out of that. Okay, so click on your enemy. So down here, click add component, uh, new script, and we'll call this one enemy script. So in this enemy script, we'll want to create a few different properties. Uh, private int health equals five, and that we'll use to um, decrement the enemy's health and then kill the enemy. And I'll also create um, two different materials, which we'll be using to make the um, enemy flash white for a moment, just to give this the feeling of impact. Private material, and of course on mat white. Create another one and call it mat default. And we will also need a reference to the sprite renderer of the enemy. And this is what we'll, we'll build. This is what we'll be assigning the materials to to change the color. Let's call it S, um, SR sprite renderer. SR equals get component sprite renderer. Okay, so we can get rid of this update. We won't be using that. What we will will need here, however, is an on trigger enter two D, and this will check for collisions with the players. Uh, projectiles. Uh, we'll say if collision dot compare tag and bullet. So this checks against the name of the tag of the colliding object. And if it returns true, it comes up like that. It's the same as writing um, collision dot tag equals bullet. So it's actually a more efficient way to do it like this. This runs a bit faster. So do it like this if you can. So if it's bullet, first thing we'll do is um, destroy collision. Okay. So we'll get rid of the bullet the moment it hits the, en um, the enemy. And we'll also bring the enemy's health down. And I'll say if health 
is less than or equal to zero, kill yourself. So we generated a function. Here we'll want to, we'll save this for later because this is where we're going to, um, well, first of all, we can just destroy the game object, which is the um, enemy in this case. But then later on, we'll do a to do, uh, to do add particle first. So we'll come back to that in a moment. But here is where we want to kind of, um, make the player flash white for a moment. So to do that, so here in the start function, we will assign the values to the two materials we created here. So we'll say mat white equals resources dot, dot load and white Flash is the name we gave it. We'll say type of oop. Ah, oh, jeez. Material as material. So I just got to cast it as a material so Unity doesn't crap itself when we try to run it. Because by default, the resources.load um, returns an object. And here we want a material. So the default material, mat default, we will um, assign the value that's currently on the sprite renderer by default. So equals sr sprite renderer dot material. So we're gonna, um, when the player gets hit, we're gonna flash to this color and then we're gonna switch back to mat default. So here, when the player gets hit, sprite renderer dot material equals mat white. So I might just run that to make sure it's all working as expected. Okay, so when we shoot the enemy, um, he flashes white. Now we just need to take the material back to its default state. So the player, the enemy rather, gets killed here. So I might just make an else here and say invoke reset material. We'll do that after 0.5 seconds. And we'll create a void function here called reset material. And in here, we shall say sprite renderer dot material equals mat default. Okay, and that's kind of working, but we'll ob obviously want to speed that up. So I think we'll go with a 0.1 delay here. Yeah, that looks pretty good. I like that. Might just increase the enemy's health to about 10, just so we can get a better effect. So we've come to the last phase of the tutorial, and at this point I want to shoot the enemy and explode them with a particle burst. So to do that, we'll first create an empty game object in the scene. We'll call it explosion. And then we'll add a component, which will be a particle system. And I think it's sitting, yeah, sitting behind the background a little bit. So we'll bump the Z. Uh, so the first thing we want to do is maybe change the shape from a cone to a circle. And when you switch from a 3D to 2D, you can kind of get an idea of what's going on there. Um, so I don't mind the squares, but I might change the color to begin with. So we'll get down to renderer here. 
hopefully my VO is not blocking the property inspector. And we'll change the material and we'll pick Sprite's default. And we'll go back up to the explosion tab and we'll bring uh, maybe the start size down to about, let's say, 0.15. Now bring in the shape a little bit too. And I'll just position that over the enemy to get an idea of how it might look. So with particles, it's very much a, a case of trial and error. You just got to play around till you, you find something you like. With, with practice, you get better at it. So the start lifetime, I might just make this a, a random value between 0.5 and 1. And let's also fade the particle out. So we'll go color um, over lifetime, select that, bring it down. If we click on this, it'll bring up this panel here. And the top tags here control the opacity or the alpha, whatever you want to call it. So bring that down to zero. Uh, we'll have to change the life, the duration a little bit too. We'll bring that down. So go to the emissions tab and we'll create it as a burst because right now you can see it's all just kind of coming out randomly. So you want it to kind of explode. Um, so we click here and Rate right over time will change to zero. Boom, so that looks really good. I think that'll work. It's very dramatic, but I don't mind that. We'll make sure that we, it's, uh, it's not looping. So take that off looping and we'll drag the explosion into the resources folder so that we can load it, load it in um, when the enemy dies. So we'll just get rid of that one that's in the scene. So we'll jump back to Visual Studio. And at the top here, we shall um, create an explosion ref. And this will be a reference to the loaded object so that we can um, load it once and reuse it over and over rather than loading it every time we want to use it. So this is a, a efficient way to do that. So we'll say resources. Uh, load. Ex oh, explosion. And we'll just do control dot to let the order complete take over. And that'll um, declare it as a generic Unity object, which is fine. So down here where the player sorry, where the enemy dies, we shall um, create a game object, a local game object, and we'll call this one explosion. Let's say um, game object, casting it, instantiate, and here we'll pass in the reference the, that we created up in the start function. And then we'll need to position it. So it's kind of sitting around the players mid sec. Um, I keep calling the enemies the players. It's driving me nuts. So explosion dot transform dot position equals new vector three. Transform dot uh, position dot X. Transform dot position dot y and here we're going to bump it up a little bit so it's not sitting too low because right now the pivot point of the enemy is at the feet so we'll say um plus point three and uh transform the 
position dot z or the z. So let's run that and see what we have. Ooh, I'm excited. Is it going to work? Oh, mind blown. That's pretty cool. I think I need to see that again. Yeah, that's really good. I like that. And just for shits and giggles, I think I'm going to move this up in here just to see what happens um, if we do that explosion every single time it hits the enemy. That's pretty cool. And you can see here we've got a bunch of um, clones being made. So we'll just address that quickly. So clicking back on our explosion um, prefab, we'll just change the um, stop action to destroy. And this just tells it to um, dispose of the game object holding the particle whenever the life cycle finishes. So I'll run that again. Cool. And you can see here all the explosions are gone. I hope you found that video useful, guys. Please do give a thumbs up if you have. And I'd also like to personally thank my new Patreon supporters. You guys will be getting access to all the tutorial files and source code for all past, present, and future tutorials. So from the bottom of my heart, thank you very much for supporting me. See you all in the next video.